This is my solution to the Power Query Dates and Time Challenge. Now, if you'd like to play along with these challenges, check out the description below and you'll find links. And were you aware of this Y2K29 bug? I wasn't until recently. I actually refer to it in the video as the 2049 bug, the 49 bug, because I'd actually made a little change and I forgot about it and I flagged that up in the video. But check it out. Let's go. So here's the challenge. Let's say this data has been exported from some system. We've got a day, month, year, going out sort of 30 years. We've got certain times of day, but with to the second, and we want to get rid of the seconds, work out the actual proper date, and work out the number of days since the last Friday. On the face of it, it doesn't necessarily seem too tricky. However, you will get caught by the 2049 bug. I didn't know about this until I saw a video from Bill Jellen. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm in this table, right click, get data from table slash range, or if you haven't got that option, go to the data menu and pick from table slash range. Okay, that pulls the data from Excel into Power Query. Now, Power Query, when you pull it straight from Excel, tries to turn this time into a decimal number. I don't want that, so I'm going to turn it back to a uh, time. Replace current. There we go. Okay, let's look at the years first. So here's the years 2040, 2044, 2046, 1950, 1951. Okay, there's a little bug, well, a feature, shall we call it, that Bill Jellen's video, I'll put a link in the description. Um, I saw this the other day and I was like, wow, I didn't know about this. Okay, so there's a bug. If you enter text or it's dates coming through as a two digit character, um, Windows, Office will turn it into, um, yeah, 1950, 1951. Where that is, okay, where you find that, and again, watch Bill's video, but, the quickest way I've found to get to it is search for currency. I know this has got nothing to do with currency, but change the way currency is displayed, okay? It gives you this screen. You then go to additional settings. So it's nothing to do with currency. It's just a shortcut to get here. You go to date and then down here, okay? Calendar, when a two year digit year is entered, have a guess what it is. And it just flips it into the 1950s. Okay, you can increase that, but that's only on your computer, so you can't guarantee it's going to work on someone else's. So you really do have to handle this in Power Query. Okay, so what do we do? So the way I'd handle it is to say, if the year is before the year 2000, then add 100 years. Okay, so here we go. I am going to add a column. So add column, custom column. Call it fixed date or yeah, fixed up, fixed up date. So if the um, year of the forecast date is less than 2000, so if uh, date.year forecast date is less than 2000, then uh, date.add years, 100 years, okay? Then date dot add years forecast date comma number of years 100 else just give me the forecast date so click OK and that's how I would fix it up okay there's the formula again date dot year forecast date is less than 2000 then date dot add years 100 Lots of different ways of handling that. That's how I'd go for it. And I can change this to a date. And to avoid any future confusion, I could right click and remove that one. Okay, next thing, time of day. Now I saw lots of solutions here with dividing by 1440, which is like the number of seconds and stuff or whole minutes and stuff. However, here's my little trick. I am gonna go to this and change this to text. That gets rid of the seconds, all right? 
Now, let me know if there's a bug with this or if there's any issue with doing this. Um, but I like it. Maybe if you're doing query folding and stuff back to a SQL database, this probably stuffs that up. So that might not be the best solution, but I'm not sure. Uh, then I want to turn it back to a time. So back to a time. But I want to add a new step. Okay, so another change type. Now, when you're doing these sorts of things, make sure you document your code. Okay, don't be the person who doesn't document their code. Okay, be a good person to yourself and to other people. So like this added custom, you know, rename that added custom step to, you know, fixed up 2049 bug. Okay, and you could even right click and add some extra descriptions in the Y box. Okay. And when you do that, you get a nice little I here about the Y. And do the same thing for these, you know, rename what these are to help somebody understand what you're doing. You know, got rid of the um, minutes by changing, or seconds by changing it into text and do something, help yourself understand what's going on, okay? I won't do it now, but you get the idea. Last little challenge is to work out how many days from this day and the last Friday of that year, okay? Now, I've done this a long, the long way, and a number of people, uh, Sam, Melissa, Igor, thanks to everybody who submitted a different way of doing it, a much better way than I'm gonna do it. Let me show you both ways. So what I'm gonna do is work out the start of the week and then deduct the two dates. So I wanna go date column, uh, week, start of the week, but that's a Monday. That's 31st, is a, okay, I know that this is a Monday, 31st of December, 2040. The start of that week, starting a Monday, is the 31st. The start of that week, starting a Monday, is the 30th. I don't want it to start on a Monday. So I go up to my formula, so date dot start of week, and change this, or add a little comma, and you can put an optional first day of the week. In this case, day dot, that's how you bring up the different days, Friday. Okay, press enter. Right, the 28th was the Friday. Okay, Friday the 28th was the start of that week. Uh, Friday the 27th was the start of that week. And then I'm just gonna deduct one column from the other. So fixed up date, click on that. Start of week, click on that. Date, and there's a subtract days option. Okay, so subtract days, and that is the number of days, okay? days from Friday. There we go, okay? And then we can just get rid of the columns and load. However, there was a much nicer solution. Um, takes a bit more thinking, but it, it works beautifully from uh, those people I mentioned. So let me show you. So we start with this. We simply say date, week, okay? We just say, um, sorry, day, day of week. So date, day, day of week. So this was a Monday, and that's why it's zero. Power Query treats the first thing as zero, okay? But I'm gonna change it again to a Friday. So back into my formula, comma, day dot Friday. There we go. Press enter. So if Friday was my first day of the week, then this day, a Monday, is the third day. This day is the fourth day. So that's the number of days from the Friday that started. That's it, it's done. No subtractions, that's it. Great, okay, much better solution. Thank you everybody for submitting that one. And we're now pretty good. So I'll just call this days, or let's change it up here. Let's call it days since Friday. And we're all sorted. Our columns are all sorted. I'll just call this my solution and we're ready to load it. So we just go home, close and load, load to. And then I'll get the option where to load it. Okay, as a table in an existing worksheet, for example. And I can just come over here and And there we have it loaded, okay? Brilliant. Hope you like that. Hope you found it useful. A few little tricks in there. Thanks to everybody who's taking part in these Power Query challenges. Um, I think people are finding them useful. I'm enjoying seeing how other people solve things. It's 101 ways. Mine's not the right way, 
Mine's one of the ways. Okay. So let people know about the channel. Catch you later.